Okay, so Glenn and I are working on 8.7 number 1, which says we have y double prime plus 3y prime plus 2y is 6e to the 2t plus delta uh, plus 2 times delta of t minus 1, and we have some initial conditions y of 0 is 2 and y prime of 0 is negative 6. So this thing here, the delta, right, is a dead giveaway that we must Laplace transform. Yeah. We, is there a reason why you have the 2 over delta or the 2 slash delta? Oh, yeah, that's just me typesetting. Um, I'm just thinking LaTeX code in my head. Um, okay. Let me maybe do this. I think I can do filled rectangle. Uh, maybe I can't. Maybe I can do this. I guess I can fix my typesetting a little bit. So I have an E to the 2T and a delta. Yeah, the slash delta is the command to make that character in LaTeX. Oh, uh, okay. Doesn't really matter. Okay, so I need to Laplace transform everything. So Laplace transforming y double prime, I get s squared capital Y minus y prime at zero minus s y at zero plus three times uh, the Laplace transform of y is s capital Y minus y at zero plus two capital Y is gonna equal six. Laplace transform of e to the two t is one over s minus two. And then I have plus two, and then the Laplace transform of Delta of t minus one is on the other side, and it is just a bare e. So that's an e to the minus two s, which would kind of make it feel like that was a u, right? Oops, and I have a minus two, and that's not right. So the the reason that I don't have a minus, or I shouldn't have a minus two, is that it was at t minus one, and so that should be a just a minus s. I'm looking at the line in the table that says. Uh, Delta of T. Right. Garbage. I don't know why I can't write on that side of the screen. It's super annoying. Um, delta of T minus A corresponds to E to the minus A S. So in my case, A is one. Buying that? Mm -hmm. Okay. So then I need to plug in some values. And so I think I have S squared capital Y plus three S capital Y plus two capital Y. And then I have a minus minus six is plus six, a minus two S and a minus three times two is six. And then on the other side, I have a six over S minus two and a minus two E to the minus S. Cool that? Uh, yeah. Okay, those cancel, which is terrific. And so then I think I have S squared plus three S plus two times y is equal to six over s minus two minus two e to the minus s plus two s.
right? Yep. Okay. So then I think I have on the, um, after solving for capital Y, I have six over S minus two. And then that thing factors into S plus two and S plus one. Uh, let's see, and I guess I can, oh no, I can't, never mind. And I have a minus two e to the minus s over the same s plus two times s plus one. And I have a plus two s over s plus two times s plus one. Okay, so I think I have some PFDing in my future here, right? Uh -huh. Okay, so if I'm PFDing things, I guess I... I don't know, we could stick stuff together or not. It's kind of personal choice. Um, I think they'll be maybe faster if I don't stick stuff together this time. I don't know. So I'm going to do the one with the six on it first. And this is going to be a over s minus two plus b over s plus two plus c over s plus one. And so I think I got Six is a s plus two s plus one plus b s minus two s plus one and c s minus two s plus one. Right, right? Uh, yes. Okay, so then evaluating it, say S is negative two. The, oops, one of those is wrong. C is, C is wrong. See what I dorked there? Uh, it should be S minus two times S plus two. Yep. Yeah. And the reason I knew that it was dark was this thing should be really easy. This should be just yeah. three substitutions to get this thing done. So when S is minus two, I should have seen two things zero out and I didn't right away. Um, so when S is minus two, I have six is B times negative four times negative one. Uh, mm -hmm. So I think that means B is three halves. Uh, yeah. When S is negative one, I have six is C times negative three times positive one. So I think I got C is negative two. And when S is two, I have six is A times four times three. So I think I got A is one half. Okay, so I'm gonna put those in up here. Uh, let's see, so B was three halves. A is one half and C is minus two. Okay, so that's one down. There's got to be a better way to do that. Rectangle, add one color, white.
Okay. So that's one part. And then my next one's gonna be, I need to decompose uh, one over S plus two, uh, oops, times S plus one. I guess I may as well decompose two. Let's decompose positive two. Uh, so that's A over S plus two plus B over S plus one, which really tells me that two is A times S plus one plus B times S plus two. And plugging in, plugging in there, S is negative one. I'm gonna get two is B and plugging in S is negative two. I'm gonna get two is negative a. Okay, great. So that'll tell me that I can rewrite this one as negative two and two. Oops. Oops. Okay, and then last one is I have a, oops, damn it. Uh, last one is a 2s over the same thing. Uh, oh, yeah. So 2s over s plus two times s plus one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's gonna be 2s is a times s plus one plus b times s plus two. And so I'm gonna say, all right, when s is negative one, I have negative two is b. And when s is negative two, I have negative four is negative a. So I think I got a is four and b is negative two. Yeah. Okay, so I need to go plug, oops. Okay, so then I can say, all right, so my two s over s plus two times s plus one is four over s plus two minus two over s plus one. Okay, so then using all of that, I'm gonna need, okay, so using all of that, I can rewrite capital Y. So capital Y is one half times one over S minus two plus three halves times one over S plus two minus two times one over S plus one. So that was my first partial fraction decomposition. And then I have minus e to the minus s times minus two over s plus two plus two over s plus one. And then my last one is going to be plus, uh, oops, plus four. Bugger. Stop that. Uh, plus four times one over S plus two minus two times one over S plus one. OK, 
Okay, good with all that, maybe kind of? Um, pretty much. Okay, and then there's some like terms I can combine. So I think I got y is, all right, uh, let's see. So I have one half times one over s minus two. And then I have some one over s plus twos. Um, and I have eight halves of them on the kind of right hand terms and three halves of them over there. So I think I have an 11 halves times that thing. And then I have minus four times one over S plus one. So, so far I have dealt with that term, that term, and this term, and that term, and that term. And then I have a plus, 2e to the minus s, 1 over s plus 2. Uh, oops, and minus 2e to the minus s, times 1 over s plus 1. And I think that's all the terms dealt with. That's that one and that one. Good? Kinda? Yeah, yeah. Okay, now I need to start inverse Laplace transforming things. Some things are gonna be easy. So I have now y of t, right? The solution to my differential equation is one half, and then I need to inverse Laplace transform one over s minus two. So if I go check, this is e to the two t. Okay, that is an e to the two t plus eleven halves, and that's an e to the minus two t, and a minus four, and then what's that one? Uh, e to the minus t. Okay, that's an e to the minus t. Okay, and then these are these ones get a little hard. So for these ones, these last couple here, where am I looking? Uh, 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 you want to look at the third from the bottom? Good, perfect. So looking at the third from the bottom one, and this is, this is where the thought process gets a little wild. So the third from the bottom line says, oops, says u of t minus tau times f of t, jet, jet, t minus tau <laughs> corresponds to e to the minus tau s capital F of S. Right, right? Yes. Okay, so when I look at, when I look at these things, I'm looking at a E to the minus one S, and then I'm noticing that that thing is the Laplace transform of E to the minus two T. Right. Um, I'm, I'm looking at this one first. And there's a two, but who cares? Right, because I already did the Laplace, the inverse Laplace transform of one over s plus two. Uh -huh. And I got e to the minus 2t. So I just, right. like, I'm looking at that 1 over s plus 2, and I'm thinking to myself, dude, you already did this. Right? Uh -huh. And so I'm looking at this line, and I'm thinking, okay, so 
I know what the what the function is, right? In my case, the function is e to the minus two times stuff. Right, because I'm looking at this thing and I'm thinking this is capital F. And that makes this lowercase f, the thing I Laplace transformed. And so now I'm just pattern matching, right? I'm thinking, okay, so the e to the minus tau s and this thing go together. And so that tells me that tau is one. And then the fact that this thing and that thing go together tells me that f of stuff is e to the minus two times the stuff. And so I think I have plus two, and then the e to the minus one s says that there's a unit, unit step function at t minus one. And then I need times the function that I've got the transform of. So that's e to the minus two times stuff. But that thing needs to be evaluated at t minus tau. So that needs to be evaluated at t minus one. Did I lose you? No, I'm here. Did I lose your, your, did you follow the reasoning? How about that? <laughs> uh, kind of. It's a little bit convoluted because you're kind of pattern matching forwards and backwards a couple of times. Right. So with the, with the next one, right, with this one, I'm thinking to myself, okay, look, tau is one. And then the function that I'm seeing Oops, and I really need to avoid using of t. So the function that I'm seeing there, right, this thing, I'm, when I look at one over s plus one, I'm seeing that's the Laplace transform of e to the minus stuff. Right. And then I need to evaluate that at t minus one. So I have my minus two, just because there's a minus two. Then e to the minus s tells me there's a u that turns on at one. And then it's multiplied by e to the minus t minus one. And then this whole thing is my answer. Mm. So you could simplify that just to have like uh, plus 2u times t minus 1 times e uh, to the minus 2 times t minus 1 minus e to the negative t minus 1, right? Uh, yeah, you could certainly simplify this a bit. Okay. Um, and if you're looking at it, what you see happening here are three parts. If I look up at the, oops, if I look up at the problem that I started with, way the hell up there, there was, there was an equation with constant coefficients, right? Mm -hmm. On the left-hand side, that DE. And so if I had solved that using my usual methods, I would have gotten these two pieces here. Those are the homogeneous piece. Yeah. This is one of the forcings. That one's associated to... A 6 e to the 2t. Mm-hmm, exactly. That's the particular solution for that thing, which I could have gotten from method of undetermined coefficients, right? 
it's this whole other business out here, right? Yeah. And that whole thing came from that delta of t minus 1. Right. And so what happened there is I had a spring that was just chilling along doing usual spring stuff. And then I hit it with a hammer with a force of two at time one. And so then it started doing some other stuff. And the stuff that it started doing looks a lot like it's homogeneous solutions. Maybe times constants. And that's kind of not really a surprise. If I, if I have a spring that behaves in a certain way and then I hit it with a hammer, I really just expect it to behave that way again. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah. And so this this whole thing is really coming from that second forcing term. And the reason that deltas always turn into u's is that delta is an instantaneous action and a u is a continuous is a um turning on and then continual after that time response to that action. That kind of makes sense. Bit. Okay. Cool. Sweet. Um, and of course, this is per usual, barring arithmetic errors. Mm, I can check real quick. It's okay. I don't want you to check. Uh, Hang on. I'll pause the recording. You want to say that again? Uh, that's correct. Yes! Victory! Nailed it. No arithmetic mistakes here, or at least arithmetic mistakes that canceled out. Yeah.